so what we're looking at here is Jackson Pollock's Blue Poles, uh, 1952. And um, it's different, right? It's, it's definitely abstract. There's a lot going on. It definitely seems like scribbles and everything like that. But I, I think to um, appreciate his work, uh, we really have to look at two things. And one is the artist and the other is the artistic movement that was happening at the time. So first, you know, let's look at Pollock, uh, Jackson Pollock. So he was an American painter. Uh, he was born in uh, 1912 and he died at the age of 44 in 1956 in a car accident. Um, I think we have to look at his life, you know, historically, like what was happening in that time. So 1912 to 1956, we had World War I, uh, the Roaring Twenties, Prohibition, the Great Depression, the stock market crash and World War II. You know, those were some pretty monumental things. And there was a lot of, um, you know, sadness, confusion, anger, you know, a lot of feelings and emotions that came out of that movement. And I think that really um, speaks to his work and, and what he's done. So um, I lost my spot here. So his style was called drip painting and, and blue poles was a drip painting and he literally just you know flung splattered spilled through this paint onto the ground he had these huge canvases that he put on the ground and he would make these huge works i mean blue poles was literally seven feet tall but by, by 16 feet long um you know so these were these were just massive works Blue Poles was originally uh, number 11. He called, he didn't really want to name his paintings. He just, he just gave them numbers and that was it. He felt that titles really kind of distracted you from truly interpreting the work as you would. So like, let's just say, you know, this is called Blue Poles. We immediately look for the Blue Poles and we kind of miss everything else that's happening. You know, so just to give it some number, you just seen it for its true essence of what it was. And you didn't kind of come into it with any kind of bias or anything like that. Um, the second thing I want to look at is the movement that was happening at the time. So these are some other abstract expressionists here, um, de Kooning and Klein. And, um, you know, this came around in the 40s and the 50s, this movement here. And it, it really shifted the focus of the art world from what we would know as Paris, France, being kind of like the Mecca, to actually New York City, you know, the United States. And this, and this, this type of art really just kind of turned art over on its head. I think of musically like the punk rock movement. You know, we had um, – we had the disco and then here comes punk rock and it was just raw and it was just energy. And that's really what abstract expressionism was. So um, it, it wasn't necessarily about, you know, creating this perfect landscape or this perfect portrait. Abstract expression was just that expressing the inner world of the artist, you know, these raw, untamed emotions, you know, everything was dynamic and it was alive. And if we think of Pollock's life, you know, wars, depression, prohibition, the Great Depression, you know, you know, I could kind of see that, you know, in, in his work here, this work right here, and you can't really see it, obviously, from this picture, but, you know, he, not only does he have the layers and layers of paint, but there's, uh, there's like uh, paint caps in, and keys and thumbtacks and nails all kind of embedded in this work that really not only gave it a, a physical depth and texture, but almost gave it kind of more of this emotional, emotional content, you know, with the work. So when you're looking at uh, Jackson Pollock and abstract expressionists, know that you're looking at more of this inner world and like uh, this idea that if I was to, you know, spill my mind, my heart onto the floor, that it wouldn't fit into these perfect little boxes and it might not look real pretty. That it would be just this mess of emotion and madness. And that's kind of what we got here. So uh, Jackson Pollock.